when I was younger, that, that gradual thing of, oh, people were putting me in boxes. I didn't even realize I was being put into boxes. Um, but then going into school and having some girls go, oh yeah, J yeah, Jazz is black. But then someone else go, no, but no, she's not. And it's like, oh man, like, <laughs> where do I fit in? Um, I'm Jazina McCallum. I currently do people and operations at Solo Studios. I do loads of other stuff. I host, I stream games. So when I moved into this industry um, and became more involved in HR as opposed to just operations, I just feel really passionate about how can I make people feel comfortable? And that's it, it's, it's, you know, you have your bells and your whistles and your names, your EDI and inclusion and get rid of all of that. How can I just make everyone feel comfortable? Um, so when I do my policies and my job, I focus less on, you know, how do we get like more women in? Because that's very important, but it's actually, the core of it is the women are here, how do you make them feel comfortable? How can we make our workplace somewhere where women want to come without all the bells and the whistles, just naturally being a place of work that no matter who you are, what you do, what disabilities you have, that you just feel safe. <laughs> yeah, it, it's very interesting. I think growing up for me, um, being of mixed race, it, it, it's been a journey, to be honest with you, because there was a certain age where I just didn't think about my race, right? I, I brought up, my, my mum is of mixed race, my dad is of mixed race, all my sisters are of mixed race. My grandma is uh, white Scottish, um, and I, I've got black family as well, and they've just always accepted me. We've never discussed it, it's never been a thing. Um, there were differences between like my grandma's house, she's white Scottish, and, and, and my house. Um, but I didn't, I put that down to personality and not, you know, difference in culture or, or race. And it's when I started getting to school where people would go, are you white or black? I'm like, whoa, wait, oh, shit, do I have to box myself? When I was younger, that, that gradual thing of, oh, people were putting me in boxes, I didn't even realize I was being put into boxes. Um, but then going into school and having some girls go, oh yeah, J yeah, Jazz is black. But then someone else go, no, but no, she's not. And it's like, oh man, like, <laughs> where do I fit in? And then not realizing that my loudness and my impulsiveness was ADHD as well, was quite tricky. And then moving into the workspace, I think that's where it really hit me, where people were getting promoted because they were going to drinks with the lads. You know, they were, they were, and all the, all the women were acting a certain way and I just didn't fit in. And for ages thinking, was it me? Am I just not good at my job? But luckily I'd done like health and safety and ops. So a lot of it is audit. Mate, I got, I'm getting like 90%. It's not me. <laughs> um, I've got the best retention. It, it, it's not me, what else is it? And then I think the key moment for me, I went to this awards um, in, in, in a company and not feeling like I could talk to anyone. I couldn't just approach people that are in my business because they would look down at me like, who is this girl? Who is she? She doesn't look like, she. I talk different, I act different, my mannerisms are different. And it was like, oh. I don't want to feel like this. I don't, I don't want anyone else to feel like this. Um, and I realized in that industry, if I'm honest with you, I don't think I could have changed it. So I left. <laughs> and I don't think the answer is running away all the time, but sometimes to save yourself, you have to run away. <laughs> you know, find somewhere where you can, now in, I feel like in the game industry, I can actually help mold it. Uh, and help towards a growth. And this is why I'm in HR, not to be that, that, that bitchy HR person, but actually to have an actual change, something that's not performative, something that's not a tick box. Yeah, I just don't want anyone to feel like how I felt in my other industries, in the game industry, because the game industry has so much potential. It's just, I feel like if, you, if you've never been marginalized as a mon or in a minority, you're not gonna like, realize how lonely it is sometimes. When I first started streaming, for example, all my viewers were like white Americans. And it was lonely, man. It was so lonely not being able to talk to people that understand what you've been through. Whether that be like my ADHD, when I'm cutting people, being excited. Not, not, they're not knowing that it's because I'm excited, you know? Having, like growing up and talking about braiding my hair, 
not being able to have that, it's human connection. This is why these things are important. People are like, oh yeah, but diversity, but it's human connection. We all thrive off connection and being, as introverted as you might be, as, 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 as liking to be alone you might be, everyone needs a level of human interaction. And this is why it's so important. I was downstairs just chatting to, to everyone there. And it's just, having someone to understand you is so, so super, super, super important. You don't want to be isolated. Um, I'm so grateful for, one of the reasons why I do like the game industry is because there's so many little spaces that you can go into and feel wanted and acknowledged. Um, I was at a BAFTA talk the other day. No, sorry, it wasn't, this wasn't. It was uh, the course that I'm doing for HR. And one of the things is, picture yourself as a child. But how did you feel as a child when you weren't listened to? When you're going, mum, mum, and they're not listening to you. Mum, I'm upset. And they're going, that's nothing to be upset about. Mum, I'm hurt. That's how minority people feel a lot of the time. You know, you, you have these valid feelings and wants and, and beliefs and things are not how you are. That's how minority people feel all the time. We, we, feel, we feel like children just wanting to be listened to and no one's listening. Listen, like honestly, listen. You know, if you are in a workspace where, let's be honest with you, sometimes making diverse workplaces are difficult, right? I'm not gonna, unfortunately, where the industry is now, a lot, uh, I'm gonna, gonna throw out percentage, right? I don't know the percentage, but minorities are minorities for a reason, right? So if you are in a place where you don't have many minority people, listen to the ones that you do have, sit down with them. You're the CEO of a company of like 50 people. I'm not being funny. You have time to sit down and be like, how can we do better, right? And action what you can. Obviously some things you can't just yet, but listening to the people that you're responsible with for, so if, you know, British Esports might have gone, oh, we need to do something. So they got the women in Esports and it's, and if you can't do it, find someone that can bring someone in, you know? Uh, it's just listen, basically. Is the, the be all and end all is just listen and generally want to help. And if you can't find someone that, that can. <laughs> yeah, I was a bit shocked. Um, we all have imposter syndrome and being asked, I'm like, oh wow, people want to listen to me? It's the same thing, it's, it's listen. Um, and then I was at Sunderland, oh my gosh, I'm having to travel, what's going on? <laughs> and then when I got here, it was just lovely. It just felt natural. The talks just felt natural. They didn't feel forced. It didn't feel like a tip box. It generally felt like we just want to showcase and get opinions and it's so important to do things like that. Having, it doesn't need to be, I've never, so again, I've never done an event where there hasn't been an audience, like that I can actually see. I've done talks at BAFTA, I've done talks, and actually it doesn't need to be that, right? It can just be people in a room with a camera live broadcasted. And, because it's not about the tip box in the performative, it's just giving people a platform and by doing this, you're acknowledging the, minor the mi mi minorities that you have. It's the acknowledgement. It's, we think you're good enough. Here's a space and just chat about you. <laughs> yeah.